Hey, everybody. This is the June 17th, 2024 um, community resource meeting. And um, Laura, would you mind calling the meeting to uh, do the roll call? Sure. Um, Councillor Clemmer. Here. Councillor Perry. Here. Councillor Dobbs. Here. And Councillor Rothenberg. Here. Okay. This um, meeting is being audio and video recorded. And you could, we have a seat for you up here, uh, Senator. You could grab the one with the mic. Um, and uh, so those of you at home, Senator Comerford just walked in. That's what was going on. Thank you. Sorry. No, no, you're good. We just started. So, um, okay, now we have uh, some public comment. And uh, um, do you want to go? She's not, she probably won't be at the meeting, so. So yeah, if, oh, we don't have a microphone up there. Sorry. Sorry. Over here. There you go. I can just stand up here and then use this microphone so it's in the Zoom. Okay, thank you. And then it's a um, two minute. I can be close. Okay. So the meeting's, uh, the, the couple of comment is held to two minutes. So let me just. Okay. Thank you. You can go ahead. Hello. I'm going to state your name and where you're from. Shelley Berkowitz, Northampton, uh, Ward 1. And I've commented before um, that I moved here 29 years ago with two young children, primarily due to the reputation of our public schools. Um, I say thank you to the mayor, who may hear this later, uh, and city council members for another opportunity to express my views on next year's public school budget. Thank you, Senator Comerford, uh, for the incredibly hard work you do every day in the legislature advocating for your constituent communities. I know that you hold close to your heart the continued flourishing and success of Northampton Public Schools as a personal and a family priority as well. Joe, I thank you for and have worked with you to support public uh, health care bills, advocating for human rights, social e equity issues, such as Medicare for all and others. Um, as a physician, uh, I think of the school budget crisis using terms the same that are for medical triaging, the most critical acute need for a person or cause, in this case, the budget, uh, a need that is both fixable and urgent, not beyond repair, not a minor problem that can wait to be graphic, not a decapitation and not a pimples. <laughs> Um, this is the current crisis we're now facing, how to maintain funding for a level services uh, budget for our schools that does not include any cuts or services. The crisis is immediate. It requires immediate triage for an immediate solution. The money is there. I'm confident of that uh, to fix this crisis now for our children without any override. I'm confident that later tonight, council uh, person Rothenberg and other experts can show this very clearly. I'm confident, Joe, that your hard work in the state house on behalf of equitable education funding for us in Western Mass can help reassure our mayor that fixing this now will renew the appreciation and mutual respect of all in this community. Improved Title State 70 funding, working for an equitable Smith pilot fund are some of the added ways to prevent crisis. For now, the right choice is obvious. The money is there. Please fund all our current public school services and dedicated staff without cuts for all of our city's children. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Nan, could you unmute yourself and state your name and where you're from? Nancy Smith, Chapel Street. It is time for those who say they are passionate about education to walk the walk. When creating annual budgets, the city has been underestimating incoming revenue since 2018. 
Incoming revenue that is not designated to budgets goes to reserve funds, leaving the schools underfunded. The underfunding was made worse because the WINS model adopted in 2018 was never funded for safe, safe staffing levels. COVID funding masked the problem but never resolved it. An outside audit recommended switching off our conservative scaling way of cash into reserve funds after three years. This started under Mayor Narkowitz, so it's way past three years. Our reserve funds are healthy now. We have the money right now to level service budget our schools. Some reserve funds are easily accessible free cash. Other reserve funds and any rules around them are created and controlled locally. The state offers suggestions, but no state rules on their use or how much should be in them exist. Rules created here can be changed right here between the mayor and city council. There is enough free cash without a lot of self-imposed hoops to get the school on track without override or the need to replace reserves immediately since outside auditors say we have enough. Next year, improve revenue estimates, budget all departments first, then add to reserves, creating no false emergencies while continuing to grow our reserves responsibly. Mayor Shiara inherited the current budgeting method and schools that have been underfunded for years. If we are truly passionate about education, now is the time to act. Please step away from an inherited budgeting method that no longer works and add the two million needed to level service budget our schools now. It is the morally and fiscally responsible thing to do. We can do this. And hopefully Senator Comerford has some good news about state funding for us tonight too. Thank you very much for all you do. Thank you, Nan. Um, it doesn't look like there's any other, anyone else that wants to speak. Is there anybody else that doesn't have their hand up? Okay, I don't see anything, anybody. So, Senator Comerford, so, oh wait, um, sorry. Um, so we have to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Well, I think I didn't okay. upload them. Oops. Put that on the next time. Um, are there any updates from any of the committee members? No. Um, Garrick, nothing? Okay. Now, um, so thank you for coming today, Senator Comerford, and um, we're really excited to have you at our meeting today, and um, I'm looking forward to this. So well, the floor is yours. Thank you to extend the invitation. Mm -hmm. Am I able to share slides? I can yeah. do a co-host um, for that purpose, and I'd be... Oh share them myself if that's if you prefer is it easier for you to share from your computer um not necessarily i mean then you don't have to cue me when you want to change the slides if it but it, it would i would just have to get on i think i would have to get online right oh i sent debbie yeah. my slideshow okay well so then um if you send it to me yeah I can okay share it. Yeah. all right uh logistics thank uh, you Sure. There's just a few slides. Yeah, I looked at them today. Um, I should say count, counselor. Asterix Glimmer. <laughs> just call me um, up. It's just Glimmer now. Um, and, uh, let's see. Do you want me to resend? Um, you're your email. Let's just send it to me. Uh, sorry. Um, here it is. Joanne. Okay, so I'm going to send it to you. Okay, yeah. Boys and girls, boys and girls. There you go. Mm. Yeah, for that, but it's okay. How's the drive over? Okay. Smooth sailing. Yeah, it's not different when the schools are out of session. So. 
just trying to like, I haven't usually shared it as a Google document. So I think I'm going to download it. Let's see onto, it's a PowerPoint, right? Okay. Um, Here it is, and now let's see. Okay, so um, from beginning, okay, here we go. Let me screen share, oh, dear. Thank you, Laura. I appreciate it. <clears throat> so hi, everybody. Um, it is an honor to come before you today. This has been long scheduled, and I realize that you are in the midst of uh, a, a, a very um, intense arc of meetings today. So I appreciate you still making time for me, uh, and I appreciate all the work. I say often that there is really nothing harder than municipal governance, um, and that's because all the policies and budget decisions from the federal level hit the state and they all cascade down onto your shoulders and it is difficult beyond measure um so uh, we started uh, wanting to come so this is my sixth year representing the hampshire franklin worcester district and in this session um, we started to make more concerted rounds to uh, meet with municipal governments um and this is my second time meeting with the city of Northampton through this committee process. Uh, and it was certainly useful to me the first time I did it. And I'm I'm glad to have the opportunity to do it um, a second time. So uh, the slide up that you're seeing now is our district. It's 25 cities and towns. The star is Northampton and it climbs up the Connecticut to the Vermont and New Hampshire border. And it arcs over uh, almost surrounding the Quabbin Reservoir. And I show you this you know, uh, not because it's the, the it, it's the most beautiful district um, in the state by far, but also just uh, it gives us a sense of the range of communities I represent. And in every single one of them, education funding uh, and municipal governance and the role of the state and the difficulty of managing state and financial, uh, state and federal um, policy and budgets um, are present. So if we can go to the next slide. Um, very briefly, this is the team we work with. Elena Cohen is uh, likely more known to the city than others uh, because she is the district director. Elena and I have a monthly meeting with the mayor um, and relevant uh, staff, uh, depending on the agenda. That has been also exceedingly useful. Uh, the city of Northampton is larger in geography than a lot of my other towns. I also happen to live here, as I think all of you know, and, and therefore we are focused here on a number of um, really important projects. I'll detail only some of them tonight because I want time for your questions and feedback. Um, but the rest of my team does the rest of our business. Uh, and we're gonna only talk about the municipal interface tonight, but you know, imagine that you know, we file legislation like the legislation I'm working on uh, today for a climate bill. Um, we do budget work um, and I pay especially attention to the impact that the budget has on cities like Northampton. We do constituent work and let me pause here and say, I take constituent work very, very seriously. And so if you have constituents who are not being served by the state, I hope you will give them my cell number uh, and my email and ask them to be in touch. We have um, we have a great tra tra track record uh, for constituent services and I'm proud of that. Um, and. Uh, you know, often it's we know about things because of a great city councilor who has brought them to our attention. And that is just as it should be. Um, and even if it's federal and you can't figure it out, like it's vexing, you know, get me involved. Right. Because that's the that's my job. Uh, if we can go to the next slide. Thank you, Laura. Um, so these are the committees I'm on uh, this session. Um, you'll see that I am uh, on Ways and Means as assistant vice chair. What does that mean? Um, you know, that means that uh, I am uh, 
third down from in the ranking, you should expect me to rise. That's my job, actually, in state government. Um, so I am in leadership now. I wasn't before when I talked with you. Again, you should expect that of me uh, because in leadership, I have more access, um, uh, not uh, a golden ticket, um, but I have more access to talk to my colleagues. I'm I'm at conversations that help set the agenda. I can make cases for us here in Western Massachusetts in a, just a different way. Um, uh, I'm also on higher education that works because of UMass and GCC especially, uh, but also because I, I do think public higher education is an equity issue um, and that's how I come at it. Um, so I'm happy with the advances we've made with public higher education. For example, we have in-state tuition for undocumented immigrants right now, the first time. Um, and I think it was bananas that we didn't have it before, but we do now. Why, why should we preclude anyone? from uh, having, who's living here and who spent their life here from accessing our great colleges and universities. Um, I'm on economic development. This is my first year. I wanted to be on it because our, you know, economic development efforts in Western Massachusetts rebounding from COVID um, have not been easy as the city knows among many. Um, and I'm excited about the economic development bond bill. We can, you can certainly talk to me about that. That's forthcoming. Um, I'm also on racial equity, uh, civil rights and inclusion. I asked to be on that um, because it's such an important issue to me personally, but also to the to cities like Northampton. I'm on the Senate Global Warming and Climate Change Committee. Um, and why, how could I live in Northampton and not do climate, right? Because it's such an important piece of who we are. Uh, and then I'm on both the Senate and the Joint Rule Committee. And if you've ever heard uh, Jim McGovern talk to you, he says it's the sexiest committee you've never heard of. And it's true. Um, no one talks about rules, but it helps set the agenda um, for debate, uh, for how many um, bills will come to the floor, for the kinds of ways that we are increasingly transparent, as, which I uh, really, um, I am a fan of and accountable to constituents. Uh, so um, so that is a good um, a good committee to be on. Uh, and a piece of work I did on that committee this session was um, the Senate rule on Indigenous leaders now says that if you're an Indigenous leader coming to testify, especially on an Indigenous bill, but not exclusively, you have privileged seating, um, like an elected official would, right? Any elected official gets some privileged seating. So um, uh, from the state level, so these folks are also, uh, so things like that, right? Um, I'm on councils and task forces, but I don't want to take your time on this. The councils and task forces, those are things I get appointed to. The caucuses, that's how I organize myself. What do I think is important? Uh, and again, I think it's important because you think it's important. Um, so I I pay attention there. Okay, next slide. Um, I'll go very brief. I'll go quickly through these. This is um, the legislation, just to remind you, legislation is over a two-year cycle. We're coming to the end of formal sessions in the la in we're in the six weeks till uh, the period of time where, uh, according to the legislature, um, we stop formally voting. We never re adjourn. We never reset. We recess, but we never adjourn. Meaning we're always working. We're a twenty. We're a, uh, we're a twenty four months in a session or a year round legislature. Not all in the in the country are. We are in Massachusetts. It's just that we'll stop taking votes on July 31st. Bills will pass. Um, money may get expended. Certainly home rules will continue to churn. Uh, new legislation will be filed. It, we never, we, we just won't convene to vote. Um, that has a lot to do with the fact that we're in an election cycle and um, people who came before us um, decided that there were too many vulnerabilities for folks who were running for election. So... You know, I, I think about it multiple ways, but we won't focus on that tonight. Um, so this is all to say that Northampton has an influence on what I do um, from the jump, right? Northampton tells me what, you know, gives me ideas for bills. Many of the pieces of legislation I file um, come from constituents and leadership in Northampton. Um, and that's what happens in the first year in January of the of the of the year one of the session. And then Northampton influences everything I do from there, what I co-sponsor, what hearings I go to testify in, um, the the my advocacy around committee decisions, um, my advocacy uh, when it comes to the floor, uh, my advocacy through conference committee. And we're going to talk about the budget conference committee tonight. But just know that 
you direct me um, in these efforts. And, and because of you, I'm better at what I do, at better at delivering, um, you know, because your uh, both your advocacy is the wind at my back. Um, and also you help me understand what it looks like when I do good work for you, right? I, I work at the pleasure of constituents. Um, so next slide. And just like legislation is over two years, the budget's over one year. Um, so we are right now in a budget conference committee and, and um, the counselor has my these slides. And so uh, hopefully you'll you'll disseminate them so that as part of the minute. So okay. um, uh, so uh, the state budget process, again, starts way before um, the uh, fall agency um, budgets, because Northampton has told me what's important to the city. Um, and I already know it's on my radar. Um, you know, as agencies are submitting budgets to the governor, um, I am talking with municipal leaders and across the district. So, idea of wilderness, mechanism, multi cell, last wilderness, organic care, medical. Let's see, can we see who's um, Zoom? You know, at, you know, Zoom. Four years into the pandemic, is still I still uh, get caught off mute all the time. Um, so I. Uh, the Senate's work, the, the governor files the budget, just like in the federal process. Those of you who follow the Fed, you know, president's budget, same idea. It's a great blueprint. We need it. And then each branch does its own thing. So Representative Sabadosa, also working for Northampton, will go first in April. I go in May. And this May, I had a long list for Northampton, um, not the least of which was Chapter 70. Um, but the fixes and the fixes for Chapter 70 are much bigger. Um, so we'll talk about um, we'll talk about that. But, you know, I also had the equitable approaches to public safety money because the governor um, zeroed that out um, for the second year in a row. And that's the fund funding that fu funds in part Department of Community Care. I have public health money, um, which is we're now finally paying. The state is finally paying some portion of the public health expenses of Northampton. Um, so I have to make sure that number is up. Um, I have chapter 90, which is our road and bridge money. And I'm happy to say that that money has improved in its calculation uh, because it used to be um, only all driven by a formula that really uh, devalued uh, cities like Northampton. Um, so I have a long list of Northampton budget priorities um, for state lines when I head into budget. Again, you all tell me what to fight for. Um, and constituents tell me what to fight for. And that's how, how I'm able to help ensure that whatever comes out of uh, the Senate budget and then through conference, um, we're able to, to move on. Um, okay, next slide. So as I mentioned, there are different pieces of our work, municipal and regional, which we're gonna talk about tonight, constituent legislative and uh, legislative legislation and engagement and budget and bond bills. Um, it's all part of it, but just because we want to not talk forever and ever, we'll focus on the, our my relationship to municipalities. So next slide. Um, so uh, we do a significant amount of regional work um, in the Senate office. That's traditional, right? Senators have five staff um, and we cover a larger uh, territory just because we represent 175,000 people. That means, especially in... Uh, uh, geographically mm -hmm. tiny communities, right? Um, we can see three counties, right? And, you know, a large swath of issues. Um, so top of the list is K-12 education, hands down. Um, so you know better than I do because you're living it, right? Uh, the Student Opportunity Act that passed in 2019 was a generational bill. It was a racial equity bill. It did not help rural schools or minimum aid, low and declining enrollment schools. Now that's Northampton. N Northampton is a classic minimum aid district. What does that mean? It means that Northampton has been losing population over a period of time uh, in, in schools. This is like two thirds of the districts um, statewide. So Northampton is not different than two thirds. It's an outrage, you know, two thirds of the district statewide. Um, but what it means is that you're not seeing chapter 70, you're seeing minimum aid. Um, and what that means is you're getting actually more 
than you would be getting if if the state was calculating a per student um, expenditure because they're in our constitution we cannot um, give you less next year than we gave you this year even though you have fewer students um, now that sounds good on paper right but except minimum aid doesn't go up more than one or two percent and inflation does is of course more than that right and that is a real problem for uh, districts like Northampton, which I know about, you know, you've helped me know it. I also know it from every other district I serve. Um, and this is a real significant issue. So uh, I have filed a, a rural schools bill um, with Representative Natalie Blay. Much of that would help Northampton uh, because, again, it's about rural and low and declining enrollment. Um, that bill, unfortunately, was eviscerated. Um, this session. So it was reported favorably, but it didn't um, didn't come out in any form that I would want to further. Um, and so we live to fight another uh, we live to fight another day um, in the legislature. But that has in it, for example, uh, better funding for special education, which is one of the issues that, you know, again, every single district I represent has special education numbers over and above an assumed percentage at the state level. Um, it's an outrage, uh, I think. I'm going to say outrage a lot tonight, maybe, because it's true. Um, so it has things like that. It has regional school transportation. It has a building provision. All of these things could help Northampton um, in it, even though it's called a classically rural bill. Um, it's just because there's sisters. Um, so we work on we work on that. I also, as part of the budget, um, we were able to increase minimum made by to $110 a student. That's not a game changer for Northampton. Um, uh, but I also was able to work with Senator Lewis on a budget amendment, um, which would bring in a chap, essentially the beginnings of a chapter 70, um, bless you, a chapter 70 commission. Um, you know that chapter 70 is basically comes in two pieces. It's what the state pays Northampton and what North Ham what the state asks Northampton to pay. So even as Northampton has low and declining enrollment, there's greater wealth in the city of Northampton. And that's happening at the same time. Um, and that is an issue to grapple with. It just, it, it changes the calculation. So it's called combined effort yield is the calculation. And uh, it is capped. Uh, at 82 and a half percent. This is, again, this would need to be a, a mini seminar, but suffice to say that as a community gets wealthier um, and as a, commu a community pays more, um, but in Northampton's case, Northampton is getting wealthier, but um, we are at a minimum aid. And so there is a an acute collision. Again, Northampton is not alone here, but it must be looked at. This must be looked at. Uh, because the situation on the ground is untenable everywhere. So that passed, I'm happy to say. Um, Senator Lewis and I really threw down on that. We have to get it through conference. Um, and that will be the first um, the first of its kind in this new generation. Uh, in the last um, two budget cycles, I have asked Secretary Patrick Tutwiler in a hearing I chaired at GCC on education, if the administration would open up chapter 70, noting the pain in the districts I represent, and uh, they will not open it up without legislation. So this is our endeavor um, to open up chapter 70. More should be done, um, but this is a step forward. There's also a bunch of other things that we do regionally that affect Northampton or that Northampton's a part of. So something that affects Northampton is the relicensing of First Light Hydropower. That's up in Gill, between Gill and Northfield on that part of the Connecticut. But the health of the river affects our farmers. It affects our um, the, um, the uh, recreation and outdoor usage of the Connecticut. Um, we are also engaged and in significant regional watershed and flood control work. And that, of course, has everything to do with Northampton's pump station um, that we've been very engaged in um, looking, you know, raising this with the administration along with uh, Western Mass Director Kristen, Kristen Ellico. Um, 
along with the mayor, of course, with the leadership of the mayor, really asking officials to really look at what's happening with Northampton and the untenable situation of having essentially 100-year-old, 300-year-old pumps um, that failed last July. And um, that is something that actually can make me walk the floor at night. And so I pay a lot of attention to that, specifically for Northampton, but then all of the Connecticut River, Deerfield, Hadley, Hatfield, had significant flood damage um, last July, and we're promising a severe weather a summer. So I've certainly been in touch with the mayor. I know she's um, asking uh, her directors to prepare, but you should know that this is something that I won't stop on. Just like Chapter 70, we need actual capital uh, for Northampton to build. It's it's not possible. Um, I pay a lot of attention to solar and battery siting, and that's because I believe I believe in the Green Revolution, probably like I'm going to say, I'm going to assume, like everybody around this circle, it's just, uh, it's got to be done equitably. It can't be done on the backs of communities. You can't take away local control just because we're behind um, in our uh, climate goals. Um, however, we need to site solar and we need to site battery storage. So we have to figure that out. Um, I'm engaged in the refugee resettlement work around uh, the region, um, most especially in Greenfield. But now that we have a shelter in Northampton, we've uh, set up a meeting to meet with all stakeholders, and we're going to continue that work um, to be useful. And we inter, you know, we intervene with HLC, Housing and Livable Communities, to make sure that um, situation is going well here as well as can be um, for the people whose lives have been uprooted. Um, uh, I pay a lot of attention to RTA funding. The Senate's RTA numbers were record high with a, a nod toward innovation. So I'm hoping that we uh, see a, a proliferation of both inter-county work, but also microtransit and other opportunities to really bust open accessibility and affordability um, for PVTA and the FRTA and, of course, the MRTA over in the Worcester side of my district, but also rail, right? Um, I used to say when I first was elected in 2019, I had nothing to do with getting the Valley Flyer service piloted, but I had everything to do with keeping it. And so when I was first elected, uh, my chief of staff hel helped convene um, for all stakeholders, municipal, state, federal, Amtrak, and MassDOT, um, twice monthly meetings. And then they went to monthly meetings of just real calls where we focused together on problem solving around the Valley Flyer. I was able to get um, earmarks to help with the advertising. Um, and we, you know, really focused on um, making sure that it was a successful service. Of course, there's West East from Springfield. There's also West East from North, North Adams that could also benefit Northampton. Um, that's a, a younger sister um, service, but it's there for us if we want it. Um, and uh, of course, workforce development, disaster relief. We, Natalie Blay and I, Rep Blay and I wrote a bill, which is in the governor's budget. Um, municipalities, we were able to get 20 million for farmers last July, 15 million for municipalities, some of which came to Northampton. Um, but we shouldn't have to just depend on a one-off appropriation. There should be a stated fund that municipalities can depend on. Um, so that is making it through, I'm happy to say. Um, thanks to the governor for including it. Rep. Blake got it in the House bill. So were there. And of course, you know, mosquito control, which is everybody's least favorite topic. But when um, when public health is at risk, everybody, it, we need to be on top of it. So, um, and here's just two examples of the kinds of work that's regional work. So when we first got in this, this, um, this delegation uh, had to grapple with the Hampshire Council of Governments, which had become a dinosaur and unworkable, but yet had a hundred plus um, retirees and from the nursing home and from county government that whose uh, state pensions and health care depended on us figuring out how to um, bring the council government down without hurting them. And many of them are Northampton residents. Um, also, the historic courthouse, um, we had to figure out what to do with it uh, because it was certainly not going to, if we let it go to disrepair in the middle of Northampton, that would have been horrible for us. And so then Mayor Narkowitz, um worked and offered counsel about what would be best for Northampton. That's an example of the kind of regional work we did. So we led that work. We were happy to. And we work a lot with Eversource. Um, for example, uh, the mayor asked us to look at uh, asking Eversource, which we did, to 
look at the um, gas availability for existing storefronts that were unoccupied. And they did a big due diligence um, for us. And that was a very useful meeting we had here at City Hall. Um, but we do that. There's more than that, right? Geotherm, the city's aspirations around geothermal, um, new developments. We are engaged with Eversource a, a, a lot for not only Northampton, but the region in, in trying to broker that. Same as with National Grid, um, all the utilities we try to be useful in. Um, okay, next slide. I won't go that long on the next slide. So what do I do for, you know, for municipalities? So that was regional work. What do I do for municipalities? Um, so we do a ton of work um, supporting Northampton's aspirations for grants. Um, we also try to uh, show Northampton the money where the nor money is for sp specific projects, um, especially, you know, the, the mayor is really terrific at telling me um, what she hopes to work on or what the city is working on. Um, and so we try to do our best to get state officials to pay attention. So for, with regard to the pump station, we helped organize a meeting. Um, where stake, stakeholders at the federal and the state level um, talked to Northampton about what was going on. And Director Lascalia was amazing at telling us what the situation was. And we were able to get some assurance that uh, it fit within the bounds of an uh, application for municipal vulnerability, which is one of my favorite state programs. I wasn't sure, though, that it would fit, and it does. And Northampton put in a um, an application for um for the first phase of the pump storage work. That's great. That was great work. And now we're supporting it. Um, we, uh, so that's just an example. We coordinate between local, state, and federal all the time, um, as I mentioned, for constituent work, but also um, on uh, projects like the, the pump storage is another good example, right, of where federal stakeholders had to join state stakeholders to understand it. Um, but not only that, Coca-Cola, when the mayor asked us to intervene with Coca-Cola, we worked with Congressman McGovern to try to interface with Coca-Cola in a way in a, in a way that um, would be useful for the city um, that has not borne fruit. However, Coca-Cola did let uh, Economic Development Secretary uh, Yvonne Howe come at uh, our invitation, the mayor's and mine, Rep. Sabadosa, and she toured the site because we have to get that we have to get another tenant in there as an ally um, to Northampton. Uh, so speaking of bringing state officials, um, Secretary Howe was here recently. Um, uh, Mass Cultural Council Mike, Director Michael Bobbitt, MCC, is a huge funder of places like the Academy um, and um, Bombex. Uh, and uh, the Ruggles Center, actually, um, and other cultural, oh, and 33 Holy. Uh, so other cultural centers, historic Northampton. So it's important for Michael to come, right? So these are just some examples of where we've brought people to meet us here in Northampton so they can lay eyes on our people because we're just different, frankly, and I think we're fabulous. Um, and then we try to bring municipal priorities to Beacon Hill, right? Inviting folks to testify and making sure that the city has um and that's elena's you know emails to you when there's high water moments where we think you should tune in i will say that i can't underscore enough how different the legislature is post covid now that counselors and other people from municipalities can come and testify virtually you're changing beacon hill there's no i, I got in in 2019 and it was true that there seemed to be this complete uh divide really I, Certainly great people had worked before us, but there was still a little bit of like an East-West conundrum. Um, but when more and more people are testifying at these hearings, things are changing. So this is just me to the council, um, through you to the wider council and all boards and commissions in Northampton. Show up if you can um, and testify for things that are important to you. And if anybody needs help testifying, I am your person. Um, or, of course, Rep. Sabadosa, right? We can get you the information about the hearing. We can help you sign up. We can help you with testimony. All of it is possible. But if you show up and you spend two minutes or three minutes talking, um, things change. It's just the truth of it. Okay, next slide. Um, oh, so this slide is uh, support financial support for Northampton. So I talked to you about the, the budget line items that I pay attention to um, for municipalities. There's more than I said, of course, there's unrestricted government aid, which is called UGA. 
there's payment in lieu of taxes, there's the library funding, there's the senior center funding, right? All of those show up on something called a cherry sheet um, from the state, which you've probably seen. Um, and those lines are almost always my top, top, top lines, along with things like affordable housing um, and other things that are um, would really benefit Northampton, key line items that I know Northampton is interested in. Uh, Community One Stop is another economic development grant. But this is the, these are some of the, uh, this is some of the money that I've been able to get um, in the last uh, five, six budgets, sorry, six budgets that have affected Northampton. And why do I send, show this to you? I, I wanted you to see it because, and I know this slide is ridiculously small, but I wanted you to see it because it's, um, I want to make state spending visible to you um, because one, I want this council to tell me if you see areas where I should be doing a better job. I mean, we know chapter 70 is one of those areas, but two, I want you to, you know, in your work with nonprofits and other entities in the region, I want you to think, hey, did you ask Joe for an earmark? Like, is that something Joe can do? Um, so I tend to want to fund one time just because there's, you know, with 25 cities and towns and a limited number of dollars, you know, one time earmarks are usually sort of the things that can unlock a capital expenditure. But, you know, I'll just pull out, um, uh, well, I, there, I'll, there's lots of different ones here, but just suffice to say that these are things that have been one, one hit. Um, and uh, so, for example, Seven Sisters Midwifery up, up in Florence, right? Um, 300, I was able to get $350,000 this year for Seven Sisters. That's very useful. It's not the whole ball of wax because I'm also working to bring the DPH commissioner out. He's coming out on the 24th, I believe, to look at the regs for birthing centers because they're harsh for standalone birthing centers. They could do so much better, you know, so, but, but they needed help, especially they're starting a doula program, which will increase equity and access, but also, you know, they just needed help. They're a standalone birth center, the only one in the Commonwealth. Um, so I was able to do that in this budget cycle. I was also able to get $50,000 for Forbes for an outdoor stage. It was because Forbes asked, right? And I was able to fit it into my portfolio. Um, but there's, you know, there's numbers of other things. You'll recognize all of these things. There was just a, a groundbreaking for Smith Vocational in the horticulture building. Um, and I think that's, of course, you know, it has merit on its own right. But I also understand that Northampton is responsible for the capital budget of Smith Volk, right? So if I had a choice about where I was going to spend money, I, you know, in that cycle, in this that this one particular cycle, you know, I chose Smith Volk's capital needs because that helped ease the burden on Northampton. So I'm always thinking like this, and you can help me think better about it. Um, okay, next slide. Um, and then support for the region. Um, we talked a little bit about this, um, but you'll see that um, these are some of the line items I've also I've already med mentioned. Uh, that's Chapter 70 in all education spending, housing development money, community one stop. That's uh, the MassWorks grant that Northampton often applies for, for uh, important projects. Uh, chapter 90, we talked about the fact that that's both I have to increase that line and I have to make it workable. We're finally making it workable. So half of the Senate's chapter seven, chapter 90 expenditure um, this year is going out through what's called a rural road formula. Um, and it used to be called winter road assistance. So if you watched this presentation last time I was here, it was called winter road assistance. What does that mean? Chapter 90 has been wildly flawed forever. It's calculated using um, e economic development impact um, and uh, miles, but it is lower down on the prioritization in the algorithm and population. So economic development and population are high. Um, road miles was low, except what's the problem with that? We have the miles, but not the people. And our economic development is not can't keep pace with Eastern Mass. We're just not going to have the same impact. So we're flipping the script a little. Um, and I'm happy to say that that's been hugely useful. Um, Unrestricted government aid, we talked about pilot formulas. So pilot is payment in lieu of taxes. I have two pieces of work here. One is to get pilot up, and we've gone up considerably. Um, the other is to make the formula better. And I'm engaged in making the formula better. Like, think about chapter 90 way of thinking about that. Um, 
municipal vulnerability program. We talked about that. That's a climate resilience, equitable approaches to public safety. That's the Department of Community Care. Um, I have every reason to hope that's in the governor's base budget. I, I'm glad to have been able to carry about $3.8 million worth of um, spending. This year, it was, um, this year we are adding a million and we're uh, packing over its prior authorization continued, taking from last year and pushing forward. So Northampton should be safe. Um, I'll knock wood there, um, but it's an, you know, it's an annual grant, right? And so um, Northampton has to apply every year. Public health, police reform implementation. So this is something I, I haven't talked to the current chief, but Chief Casper and I were in touch a lot with. I, I voted for police reform. That was a higher level of training for officers that put a significant burden on municipalities. Uh, I want, wanted a higher level of training. So did many chiefs, actually. Um, and But that came with a price tag that I felt responsible for helping to pay for, the tra a training price tag. Um, and there's travel, tourism, arts, culture, things like that. Okay, next slide. I think we're at the end. Um, this is the, uh, my contact information, um, which I hope goes out to the uh, council with my real hope that you are in touch with me as much as you want. And the last slide is, uh, it's just an invitation to come visit us. You can blow past. Yeah, that's the last slide. That's my office in the state house, and it's room four, what, 410, and you're welcome to um, come by anytime. Um, and I'm happy to take your comments or questions. Um, again, I just, I don't want to minimize how much work the state has to do. So I want you to hear that I know that there is no such thing as one size fits all policy. It doesn't fit Northampton. And that's my job right now, most pressingly um, with uh, economic development, but soon next week, I mean, sorry, with climate, but soon next week it will be housing. And I'm working on a lot of things with housing that are gonna help right size um, the bill for Northampton, and then there'll be economic development. And I'm working on that, you know, earmarks and other things, bond authorizations rather. Um, and every time I look at policy, I think, how does that work for a city like Northampton and the 24 other communities I represent? Um, so I want, I really want you to know that I know that, and I want you to really hear again, I know the state, I am in a glass house, I've told some of you, of accountability. Um, because, uh, you know, I think what's happening in municipalities, again, every single one I represent is a mixture of state and federal, st state and federal policy, and then local choices. Where I can be the most powerful for you uh, because I'm working at the state, is to make the state's role better. Um, and I think for Northampton, I will say there isn't an easy answer because there's we have to address why there's low and declining enrollment in the schools, and that has to do a lot with um, a lot with charter uh, reform. Uh, it has to do a lot with um, uh, um, a lot with uh, choicing in and the f financial formula with choicing in, and it has to do a lot with um, how we are going to actually treat these minimum aid districts. Um, and then it has a lot to do with how much Northampton is asked to pay. Again, the conundrum here is you're losing students, you're a minimum aid district, but you have greater, we have, uh, it's my, my school, my kids are here. Um, we have greater wealth, and that is a collision of epic proportions that I have to work through. And um, I am clear with my colleagues that this is my work, uh, and I wish it could go faster. Um, but I promise you, it is, I will not stop. For the length of time the voters send me back, I will not stop until we are better served by education form funding formulas. So I'm happy to have comments, questions. The whole thing. Okay, thank you, Senator Comerford. Oh and we'll go to the council members on community resources first. Councilor Rothenberg. Hello. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your hard work. I especially love the Valley Flyer work. I think that's really bringing such incredible talent and new community members who are opting in to live in Northampton because they know they've got that easy access to bigger cities, it's fantastic. It's good, it's good. And counselor, because of where you are, you also may need the railroads to behave better, right? Um, and that's something, um, uh, you know, that's that like that's an example of my being able to talk to um, 
you know, Amtrak about idling, for example, which um, Councillor Nash and I, uh, former Councillor Nash, mm-hmm. and I worked on, you know, or whatever you yes. understand. So. so far, so good for me and my time. I love hearing the little toot toot. Just yeah, passing on me through. too. I, I do love the sound of the railroad. Not everybody does. So I wanted to just let you know, um, from my perspective, representing Ward 3, I am not as personally um, concerned or betting on, I would say, more results from Chapter 70, right? I'm Your term. Yes, I'm looking at... Budget. I'm looking at what we can do with the resources that we have in the city. So on that note, um, I love when I can find somebody that I can really study from to learn about different mechanisms that we have as municipalities. And I'm wondering, you don't have to let me know today, but if I could just put a bug in your ear, if you can help me find a real super expert on different local option taxes, I'd like to explore more creative solutions. And I know there's some stuff working its way through in a bill as well, but even ones that already exist, I just want to just explore the whole universe of it. It's a terrific idea. Um, terrific idea. Uh, there is a bill uh, you can have immediate impact on. In fact, the city council, if I could be so bold, um, and the mayor could have immediate impact on it's a local option real estate luxury real estate transfer tax mm-hmm. now that doesn't immediately solve our education uh budget here but it would you know if you think about money as i do and i bet you guys do too as a fungible um you know we have a pot of money mm-hmm. and so if northampton's able to get money in for affordable housing then any money that it's spending on affordable housing because northampton dedicates municipal funds uh, as it should, to affordable housing and shelter um, can be expended elsewhere. Um, so I have filed a bill um, on this. It is the governor added it in as part of her housing bond bill. Um, it would raise significant revenue um, for the city annually. Um, uh, the House did not include it in its housing bond, and it's become somewhat of a hot potato. I will say that Amherst has a home rule in it in the legislature for a local option real estate, luxury real estate transfer tax. And so Amherst is a really useful case study and the the municipal officials in Amherst have been very helpful in giving me their um, numbers about how much of CPA they use, how much of ARPA they used, how much of their own general budget they use. And it's demonstrating both the will to uh, build affordable housing um, because we want to build in Western Mass. We're different than Eastern Mass, some parts of Eastern Mass. and so we're, uh, you know, this is a real, um, it's part of how I spent part of my day was making the case for a luxury real estate transfer tax, a local option um, that the city council could adopt if you saw fit. Um, and you could set a lot of the parameters. Um, you know, is it 100% of median household sales, which is I think around 520 um, right now for Northampton median sales? Um, and then you could say, figure out who se- who pays, the seller or the buyer, what percentage, it's a range of 0.5 to 2. Um, the only thing Northampton couldn't decide is to use it for affordable housing. Um, but again, in insofar as the city spends money um, on affordable housing from different pots of money, um, you just have this to offset other expenditure, you know, your expenditures. So, um, so the answer is yes, I'm happy to. Uh, counselor, talk to you about this. I do think there's, I think I'm a, of a pretty significant mind that the state has to give municipalities a range of options. Um, you know, we have Proposition Two and a Half, which um, is a, you know, constrains tax budgets, um, c- cities' budgets rather. And uh, I feel like as long as that, uh, and I'm, I, you know, I'm on the record, it, I'd like to revisit Prop Two and a Half, right? I think it's, um, and I think it's an artificial constraint, um, but as long as we have it, um, we have to help cities raise and, and towns raise revenue to express the will of the city. And if it's a local option and, this, and the city council doesn't want to do it, you don't have to do it. Um, so, um, so yes, I'm, I'm happy to talk with you about that. National Conference of State Legislatures, uh, NCSL, has, uh, I go there a lot for creative ideas in other states. Um, and if you see something that you're excited about, I would be pleased to research it for you and return to you whatever you want. 
And then maybe we'll find that we really, it works for Northampton and it works for the region and I should file it. Um, I have been part of a, a, a group of senators that has um, wanted to raise more money through tax reform. Um, and I, you know, I will keep looking at ways. I certainly supported the fair share amendment. That is certainly, and I should have had a slide on fair share. That's certainly in our midst. And I should say, let me just pause for a second since you raised it, counselor. Fair share is here in Northampton. It's hard to see sometimes, but fair share is it right now pay in this budget, the fiscal year 24 budget, not 25, mm -hmm. but 24, right? It paid for universal school meals. It paid for significant upticks in RTAs, RTA expenditure. Um, it paid for some rail work. Um, it paid uh, for uh, early education, which helps um, early education providers here in Northampton, both private and public. Um, it paid for, um, again, this is all tax dollars. This is you paid for, right? People paid for um, some advances in um, public higher education. Um, there's a lot of, you know, other other kind of transportation things, some out east, um, like uh, the godforsaken um, MBTA, but um, and I don't mean that godforsaken and um, just in a way that it's just a chronic issue that, again, I feel like we pay for out here in Western Massachusetts disproportionately. So, OK, that's enough. Maybe the beleaguered. Beleaguered. That's a better way of putting it, I think. Totally better way. Much better. Yeah. Um, any other councillors have questions for Senator Comerford? Uh, Councillor Perry? Hey, Senator Comfort, I just want to thank you for coming. I'm sorry I, I cannot be there in person. Uh, I always love hearing you speak, and I was thankful that you came uh, again to Community Resources. Um, just a couple things. One, I want to thank you also for your focus on, on bringing people to our community and, and showing them the fabulous 413, um, your understanding of, of kind of tourism and our economic value. Uh, really makes a difference. Um, you know, I, I think that Northampton is in a very unique position right now uh, to, to have music coming back and, and we have a lot of things yeah. that are coming. And, you know, I think that translates to the state as well. You know, in, in its heyday, I believe that Northampton was not only bringing people from other parts of Massachusetts, but people travel from Connecticut, travel from New Hampshire. They come and they enjoy the, the unique culture that we bring. So thank you for always centering us in the midst of all of the other work that you do. Um, and I have, I have maybe two questions. One is just a little more about the equitable approaches to public safety. Uh, you talked about this last time you were there and you know it still is sad that uh, the governor is not putting funding in, uh, but I'm very thankful that you guys have been able to, to, to make funding happen. Um, the last time you talked, I think you mentioned that Northampton was one of two municipalities really looking at a non-police uh, crisis response. Um, there's been a lot of talk in our community about the DCC and some, some of it's been negative, some, you know, there's, um, but what I've seen is that the DCC is trying to find its way and have been doing great work. There's a lot of success stories um, and they are hoping to expand. So I'm wondering if other communities are, are being forward thinking or, uh, how does it feel trying to push this boulder up the hill and what can we do to help you? Oh, thank you. Um, so, Councillor, I just want to say you're always there, right, when we have folks come. And that's, you know, you're a great ambassador for these state folks, right? Because, again, I think my job is to get our state colleagues here. Um, and but our collective job is to open their hearts and minds and, you know, the, everybody on the council and, you know, and the mayor's office does that. So, and it's, it's how we grow a tighter bond with these great state officials. And I'm also excited about the return of the iron horse and also the, just the sort of rising tide. And speaking of like municipal work, right. Uh, Elena Cohen did battle with the ABCC for that <laughs> liquor license, um, you know, and it's um, while we have, uh, a cap on liquor licenses, which again, I actually don't support. I think municipalities should decide for yourself. I don't know why you're coming to the state. Um, you know, that's another kind of piece of work that we we have to do. Um, so the equitable approaches to public safety, um, as you know, um, EAPS uh, is a non-police crisis response. Another way of talking about it is social worker first crisis response. 
it's it's a grant light item out of the Department of Public Health. That's different from the co-responder grants that come out of DMA um, that come out of the Department of Mental Health, um, DMH. And the co-responder, Northampton also has co-responders. Those are embedded social workers in the police force. When I was doing uh, the police reform, so I had a hand in, as I said, police reform, right? I was on the committee that was doing the Senate's work. Um, I was interested in co-response. I think it absolutely has a role, social workers embedded in police forces. And I was interested in um, a an effort, a funded effort on the part of the state to foreground folks who were not associated with the police and figure out how um, both could coexist in communities, um, dispatched, you know, in a in a way that uh, maximizes each of their uh, abilities, right? So co-response in a police force and non-police crisis response. Um, and so the Equitable Approaches to Public Safety grant has remained small um, in uh, nature. I will say because of a Northampton community member, uh, Javier Luengo Garrido, the line item language that we've been able to get um, that stipulates how that is going to be spent very much privileges a city like Northampton, because there are not very many cities or towns across the Commonwealth that are doing social work only or mental health first, however you want to say it, crisis response, right? There's not even, it's so new, there's not really even like a tagline for it yet. Um but Northampton and Amherst is probably what you're thinking of, are two communities that fit that bill. But only Northampton is doing it through the Department of Public Health um, at the choice of the city. Um, uh, EAPS doesn't have to go to Department of Public Health forces, but this is, an I think, a really interesting public health-centered approach. Um, and... You probably know, I think you know, Councillor, uh, Northampton didn't get the grant in the first round. And part of our job was to ask DPH, like, what the heck? Um, Northampton had this big planning process. Why didn't, why wasn't Northampton considered? Um, and then, of course, it, it's gotten it after that, subsequent to that. And um, we had the Department of, we had Department of Public Health Commissioner out, Robbie Goldstein, to meet with Northampton and Amherst over at DCC um, so that he could see the work. Um, I... I, I would tell you if this if if this weren't so, Counselor, but I don't think there is anything nefarious in the fact that it hasn't been in the governor's budget. I think it's a change of administration. Um, and I do think DPH supports this program. Again, it's not a stable line like Pilot or UGA or um, Chapter 90. It's a grant that Northampton has to continue to apply for. And so it it cannot, and the city knows this, it cannot be considered forever funding, um, especially as more municipalities become awake to the opportunities in, in uh, crisis responder first um, uh, or mental health first crisis response. Um, uh, but insofar as, uh, insofar as this budget is concerned, you know, I'm pretty confident that we'll have $3.8 million dollars um, to which Northampton can for which North, Northampton can apply for its share. I believe the grant sizes are about four hundred and seventy five thousand um, dollars, and I know Amherst is going to apply as well. So um, I think again because of uh, Javier Luengo Garrida's work, and because I think this is an appropriate way to think about this line item, Northampton really is quite well positioned to be competitive in the grant funding because we are doing classically what it says that the line should do. Um, what can you do about this next time? I mean, I think gearing up for the governor's budget, right? And like I said in that slide, you know, the fall is going to be a really big time. We should be rem reminding Governor Healy um, that she, you know, that we have had word that she's going to include this in her, H it's called H1, and then H2 is the second year of the session. So in H1, we want to see equitable approaches to public safety funded and why is that important? Well, we it shouldn't we sh if it's funded, then it's a baseline, and we know the governor cares about it, which she does, and we know DPH cares about it, which it does. Um, but this time we had to find that sort of through the back door. I had to confirm that it wasn't um, a signal that they were letting go of the program. It's not a signal. Um, they want the program. They think it's a really important program. 
Um, they want to grow the program, um, which I'd like to grow it too. And that's also in the number of sites doing this work, like co-responder grew sizably. Um, so um, that's a long answer to a question, but I think you can, the city council can certainly be in touch with the governor in the fall with your priorities. Among them, you could put equitable approaches to public safety. Um, I can help with that when it, the time comes and asking, you know, for a certain level funding uh, of funding or just that it be included in the governor's budget. Thank you so much. Um, and I, I will keep it brief for one more question, then I'll pass it on to other people. Um, and I just had some some thoughts about I know I know you say you're on the Joint Committee for Racial Equity, Civil Rights, and I can't remember the other thing. And inclusion. Inclusion. I should have included that. <laughs> I've been in my house too long with too many dad jokes. But um, <laughs> um I so I'm I am part of the Northampton Reparation Study Commission, as is Councilor Elkins, and you know, so we've been doing some of this work at, as is Amherst. And I'm wondering if uh, there has has there been any movement on the state level in terms of reparations? Um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think in a, in a number of ways, reparations uh, could impact Northampton's community uh, very favorably. Um, you know, when we're talking about public schools, for instance, there's a lot of talk about social justice issues. Um, you know, the primarily black and brown people are affected uh, for, from underfunding. Um, and I was talking to someone recently about the possibility of looking at child care uh, payments through reparations or something like that. And I'm, uh, I'm just, I'm just curious as to whether there is a movement on the, on the Hill or there are talks about. Sure. Um, yes. The answer is yes. And thank you for raising it. And thanks for your work on it um, and support of it. There are bills filed um, that I have co-sponsored because constituents tell me that they're important. Um, and there's certainly been uh, statewide conversations that have taken place inside the legislature with advocates, you know, convening conversations and also outside the legislature um, with advocates convening conversations. Um, it hasn't progressed um, to the point where we're, you know, it's, it's possible, excuse me, <laughs> that it could come to the floor this session. Um, but there's definitely an acknowledgement here um, about reparations. And if Northampton, you know, um, if Northampton, you know, wanted to make me aware of a particular position the city has, um, I'd love to understand it. Uh, and, and you, you know, you do that by passing resolutions, which I get, right, which help me understand what you care about um, and or filing home rule petitions, um, which I, you know, it's my job to work on um, with Rep Sebadosa. So there's lots of ways you can signal. You can also send me a letter, you know, frankly, which is useful, right? In the democracy from the bottom up kind of idea, you tell me what's important. I work for you. I go show people, hey, I, I can't go home until we talk about this here. Um, so you are the most powerful people, right? I do think in the in if I look at the way I look at democracy, the people at the base are the most po powerful. I work on education funding because I care about it. Because my wife's a public school teacher. Um, I have two kids, and you know, one at Smith Vogue, one at Northampton High. Uh, but I also work on it because constituents tell me to. Um, so, Councillor, I think you had a oh sorry. your hand up too. Oh, thank you. Um... Uh, so just uh, first, thank you for coming to our meeting and for your excellent presentation. Um, I'm, as you know, I'm fairly new to the council. And um, I, before I became counselor, I was, I was on the disability commission for a few years. And, um, and then one of the reasons I decided to, to run for, for counselor was um, to try to um, influence other people in government to focus more on accessibility needs for disabled people. And, um, and um, so I've, I've been a resident of Northampton for about 20 years. And like, and um, as you probably know, the sidewalks aren't that great in, in this town. And um, other, we have other accessibility issues such as like a lot, there's a lot of businesses in town that are that are inaccessible. And uh, another thing is in the winter times, we don't have a lot of, uh, we, we don't have a lot of funding for, for, for uh, shoveling sidewalks and things like that. Um, so I guess I was just had a general question for you. If you had like any kind of like advice for Northampton or like, um, uh, I would say that like as as I've tried to tackle all these issues, 
since I've been in government, the biggest obstacle for creating more accessibility in Northampton is funding. And, um, you know, like we, like I've talked to business owners who want to be more accessible and they just don't have the money for it. Um, you know, and, and obviously I, I know that I'm sure that the mayor and other people in government want the sidewalks to be more accessible, but they're, they're, you know, like right now, for example, our capital improvement program projects that we only spend $250,000 per year on repairing sidewalks. So they end up becoming like little side projects where like, you know, one street here, one street here, and one street over. Uh, well, every now and then there'll be like a small repair to sidewalks. But so I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to look, think in terms of like, it, could could it be possible for there to be like a, a bigger sidewalk project or bigger accessibility project in Northampton? You know, the, so we could try to look for more funding to try to solve these issues faster, so we don't have to wait, you know, twenty more years. And you know, so glad you're focused here. Thank you for thank the, you. So critical. Um, so the answer is yes and. So there are state grant funds. Um, of course, we want more state grant funds and we want them to be more frequently opened. But the city, you know, I know is interested in um, accessibility through, uh, you know, through its conversations with me. Um, so yes, uh, it there, of course, there's caveats, right? Um, what, you know, what is the particular project? Where is it located? Things like that. But I, you know, I'd be happy to, you know, work with you and the mayor to raise, you know, to raise your interests and do some uh, due diligence, right? That this is the trick of working for a city. And you know this um, just through your own advocacy, you know, the city directs me, right? Um, constituents ask for stuff all the time, um, but I have to check in all the time with the city to make sure that, you know, we're all rowing in the same direction. Um, so, Yes, there are uh, there are some discrete grants, you know, um, that uh, are around accessibility, um, uh, both, you know, sort of in co community space context and also physical accessibility. Um, and, uh, you know, the chapter 90 money that I'm so laser focused on is also part of it, getting the number up and getting it to be fairer for cities like Northampton, because you're right that to pave a mile of road is between two hundred and fifty and three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's bananas when you think about the kind of money we were getting. Right, cities had to sa save up for way too long, you know. Uh, and so I'm happy about you know I'm happy to do that. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is you know if there are other ways that we should think about accessibility. For example, um, uh, we've been bugging D DCR, our good friends at DCR, for a long time to plow the bike path in Northampton as a matter of accessibility. And um, the, the governor did increase DCR's budget. And so we went back to DCR and said, okay, friends, you got a little bit more money. Can you plow that bike path? And um, they are going to start to do that. And that's a good victory for us in Northampton and the, you know everybody along the, the bike path. So the other, this is just me saying to you, if you see places like intersections with the state, there was also something um, you may have known about under the bridge on the way to the bike path, there was a like a chronic um, un, unplowed, untended. And it was really simply about um, uh, us all needing to talk to each other, right? State and municipal. Um, and we were able to sort of go, hey, who has this like 20 foot? It's about 90 foot section. Who has this? Like whose job is this? Because because it's really impeding access, equitable access, accessible access. And um you know, so we do stuff like that. So this is also me saying to you, please let me know if you see things, especially when it relates to the state, because that's what we can do. Um, and we can also file legislation. So Northampton resident Meg Bandara is it. So she's like my main person. on Yes, I'm a big fan of Meg Bandara. There you go. Yeah. So she has a bill, an accessible trails bill, which has made a leap forward this session, like no other bill, it's all because of great advocacy. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we were just together June 1st for National Trails Day. And, um, you know, Meg may win, we may win Meg's bill this session. If we don't win it this session, we'll certainly win it next session. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's all people power. As it's just people power. Um, so like, that's just an invitation to think also about systemic issues. Mm -hmm. Not only money, of course, money is I like the lady in Macbeth of wanting money uh, for Northampton, but also we can think about policy together. Definitely. Thank you.
Thank Appreciate you. that. Great question. I may be running out my welcome. Yes. I just, I just say I'm going to have to excuse myself to get home for the council meeting at seven. No, five. no, no, no. Yeah, we should. Definitely. I, um, I, just, I was going to ask if the other counselors had a question and then I'd like to wrap up by seven if that works for you. That's great. Yeah, whatever yes. works. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Sound really busy with everything going on. <laughs> There's again, I, yeah. you all are bearing the largest burden of federal, state, local. It's the truth. Um, are there any um, questions from the other counselors? Thank you so much, Senator. So sorry, I didn't mean to Oh, no, sorry. Um, yeah, it seems like... Uh, Not at all. Not at all. Any other questions? And um, yeah, we we all have another meeting at 7.45 that... Good, good. But, um, Thank you. Kind of worked it's out an all meeting day. So this is just also on Chapter seventy. The council can write a letter if you want. Oh, I see Councillor oh, Labarge's hand oh. up. Okay, Councillor Labarge. Councillor Labarge. Oh, there you are, <laughs> uh, Senator. Thank you very much for being here, and believe me, what you have presented this evening. I really appreciate it. I have to say that tourism and music is so valuable in our city of Northampton. And I want to echo exactly what Councillor Barry has mentioned. I'm a music bug. I love music. We need more and more of it. So thank you, Councillor Perry, for bringing that up. Also, Public safety, I think public safety is extremely valuable in our city. And I think people know reasons why. Also to the prop two and a half, I agree with you, Senator, that I feel and many other people that it's an artificial constraint, constraint. Right now, I have people that are a little bit over that threshold and cannot even get exemption at all in this city. Right. And it's pathetic, Joe. I mean, pathetic. I agree. They just cannot continuously afford it. Also, too, when we're talking about people with disabilities, I've been on the Commission on Disabilities for many, many years here in this city, and I take it very, very serious. I have to say, Senator, I'd let, I know I've asked you to come on my ward before, and you have, and I really respect that. And you have helped my resident very much. Believe me, he needed it. Anyways, I want to tell you that we have a serious problem with people with disabilities on Florence Road, right after Florence Heights. For 18 years, I have been requesting that they do something about the, the, the sidewalk coming down the hill. I went on a site visit with Councillor Jarrett three years ago and the ADA coordinator um, himself and I and Jarrett. And he did do a site visit with us. The sidewalk is not handicapped accessible, period. Also the curb curbings are not ADA accessible. The whole sidewalk, the whole length is disgusting. People cannot even use wheelchairs on it. And I'm hoping, Senator, at some point that you and I can get together and do a site visit there. I did talk with Donna Lascalia. You're looking at million dollars, over a million dollars, just to make it accessible for people with wheelchairs, people with different types of visib visibilities at all, at all here. I'm talking about Florence Heights and abutting streets on Florence Road. It is not accessible. 18 years trying, and there's no money. And I have to say, Councillor Dubs is absolutely correct. We just get 250000 a year, and that is not good here. We need to yeah. look at the rural areas and the protection of people, children right down the line who have disabilities. So I want to thank you, Senator, for everything you have been doing for our city and what you have done by making your eyes see, by attending and going into the houses to see what life is about for so many people in our city. Thank you dearly. 
Oh, well, Marion, uh, Councilor, sorry, Councilor <laughs> the Barge, uh, you are an example of a councillor who points to where constituents need help, right? And uh, you are exemplary um, in that regard, exemplary. Um, and, in, uh, you know, I share all your, your concerns. I, why don't we say as a follow-up, I was about to talk about Chapter 70 follow-up, but as a follow-up, let's uh, organize a meeting where I meet you there. We can ask Director Lascalia to come and we can understand, uh, you know, her estimate. And also, you know, if if the city has had contact with MassDOT on this, um, if we've uh, if the city has gone for uh, particular grant programs, um, you know, I, I just would need I need a bit more information. But yes. I just wrote myself a note uh, with Elena yeah. to follow up with you and and make this happen as soon as a session ends, like form the formal session ends. Yeah. I'd love to meet you there and uh, and really dig into this with you. No problem, Senator. We've been waiting over 18 years, so another couple of months is not going to hurt, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> well, it's no, I want to it, thank you for everything that you do. Well, it's important. And I didn't mention, but I should have, um, uh, one uh, one earmark that I was able to get this uh, this budget, like the Forbes and and, and Bay State, um, uh, um, Seven Sisters Birth Center, sorry, um, is uh, we're exploring a municipal police training program at GCC. And why is that good? Um, as everybody knows, who's tried to hire police, um, there just aren't trained police um, that want to come to a small city. And if a small city gets the police officer, they have to both pay the salary of that police officer and they have to pay for the police officer's training. And right, we want, to, I believe, I want training. Um, for police officers at the full-time level, which is what police reform did. There's no more half-time, they're called reserve mm -hmm. officers. It's all full-time training. Um, but it's a huge price tag for municipalities. It's one of the real barriers that we have in all of my communities. So I, um, GCC is exploring standing up um, a training program that would uh, I would be able to grant help grant fund um, scholarships. So they we could pump out officers that are trained okay. um so they and they would have their associate's degree um and they could be snapped up by neighboring forces so no longer would northampton have to hire and then fill the shift and pay the training costs mm -hmm. um we would just get good candidates it's um it's a risk for gcc but gcc is going for it and I'm working with uh, EOPS, with the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, because GCC also wants to update its training curriculum, which I also agree. And it should have um, a focus on racial justice. Um, it should have a, a mental health and addiction focus. It should have a focus on disability um, access, right? And how, how we're, you know, how we're talking to people with a range of lived experiences in ways that are um, more transformative. And so, uh, you know, stay tuned. I'm hoping that we're going to be able to deliver that for the region and it'll help cities like Northampton hire also, excellent also, qualified also, people. Right. Also too, Senator, we have a problem on the four-way stop on Florence Road and Pertspit Road. Really bad problem. A safety problem. Councillor Jarrett knows all about it. He's been working with, with us on it. What Donna Lascalia was hoping for was to be able to put flashing lights like I have now. I waited a year or so or more just on Glendale Road and West Stanton Road and West uh -huh. Farms Road. Right now, for four of those flashing signs are 40000 We don't have the money. We don't have the money. I'm afraid we're going to lose somebody's life there. That's how bad it's been. It's terrible. They're just going straight through the, the, um, the stop signs, still going through them. So I don't know what's going to happen here, but they're either going to have to give us more money in our city for safety on our roads, especially when we're coming to intersections right down the line. So, so that's for now. <laughs> so on that, th that's actually a good example of where the council could think about requesting an earmark, right? Um, $40,000 is not, is a lot for a municipal budget where every cent counts, yep. it's not so much for an earmark. Um, so, you know, that's something, if we can work together um, to raise these issues 
that's, you know, that, I mean, I'm glad we were able to do Forbes um, stage, you know, that's a good thing for this year uh, and seven sisters, but we, you know, we can, if I know, if I have greater visibility into, especially these one-time capital needs, um, it can help me help, help the city better. Um, And, you know, I, I can't, as you know, right, I represent 25 communities and I have to think of funding equitably, but, right. you know. And Donna, um, and Donna has to look at her funding also. She has her limit and that's it. And we don't have the money to put the flashing light on the stop signs. Right, right. But again, we can have that conversation. Um, yes, definitely. In terms of where the city's priorities are um, and what's most needed. Thank you very much, Senator. Thank you. Thank you. I'm running in. I'm running. I'm running you're up good, to my good. time. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming, Senator Comerford, and all you're doing for us here. And um, it, it shows that you're on our side and trying to make life better here in Northampton and yeah. and meet our needs. So we really, really appreciate it. And I, I appreciate your service so much, all of you, um, and um, all of you on Zoom. Uh, and again. Uh, my list of things that are not quite working um, or not working at all from the state is long and aching. And I am sorry that they are long and aching, but I promise I, you know, if I go, if the voters send me back, I, you know, I will take up things that I, we talked about tonight and continue to try to make things better. Um, but one thing that the council can do is write a letter in favor of the chapter 70 commission. It's in conference committee. Um, the Senate, it's the Senate only. Um, the House didn't do it, which is fine. Um, but that would be meaningful um, for us if we could have a stated process of looking at the inequities in Chapter 70, um, both in terms of what you get and how you contribute. Mm -hmm. That would be extraordinary. Um, we've been moving um, this ball too slowly. I, you know, I haven't been able to have a leap on it. My first session, I did a a study that looked at the, you know, the uh, collision between Prop two and a half and education funding at the municipal level. So we have a study already done that this commission can look at. Um, there's lots to know, um, and we could really make recommendations. It's supposed to make recommendations for budgeting and and legislation. What's your deadline for the letter? It's it's a when you can moment. Um, the we're supposed to technically have the budget. Uh, conference report by July 1st. Mm. Um, we won't meet that deadline, but, you know, if I could show, um, you know, the conferees, you know, that my city, one of my cities is asking for this, it just helps me. Um, I'm sure we'll call your office, figure that out. Oh, sure. Yeah. And um, uh, I'm happy to give you the, I can, I can resend a budget memo yeah. um, that has, um, I will send that to you, Councillor. Thank you. Um, that has uh, it, the specifics on it. Maybe you could send it to Laura, and she could send it out to all of us. Sure, that's a good idea. Sure, that way the whole thing. And if this, you know, it doesn't have to be a long letter. It can be just like keep this provision. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Okay. Anything else for me that I'm taking away? I have something for Councillor the Barge, mm -hmm. and I have this budget memo. I think we're all good here and we know how to get in touch with you if things come up. So, yes. And, yeah. you know, I do, like I said, I do meet with the mayor. I'm happy to have, you know, I'm happy to have other uh, consultative meetings completely. Um, oh, and Councillor Dubs, you're going to tell me, right? You're going to uh, ID areas where there's yes. potential policy or budget. And then we would do the same thing that Councillor the Barge was suggesting, which is we should meet with the city to look at the issue together. I would love that. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, one thing we've been discussing together is to to really think about what would a rollout of repairs look like that was based on safe routes, right? Opening up main arteries on those sidewalks. Yeah. And that's just not something that's been part of the way that we've assessed yet. And so that's kind of a whole new thing that we'd like to explore. We'd love some help. So one thing I will do also is we'll make sure that Laura gets all of the uh, street-related grants 
because there are programs that um like safe streets complete streets you know that um that are available so let me i'm going to write that down too and we'll send that oh thank you and as part of community resources too, that would be something good for us to work on. Oh, yeah. That's so, um, anything else from you there at home? We're talking to you, Councilor Perry. You good? No, I, I'm yeah. very thankful for the time. I know that we are strapped for time. So, yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, not your fault, please. All right. Best wishes, friends. Thank you. Thank you so much. For, Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you for allowing me to come. Anytime. Door is always open. <laughs> um, do you mind if I just move on? And I want you to move on. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, so um, there's no items referred to committee. Any new business from anybody? Oh. Okay, then um, if somebody can make a motion to adjourn, I will attempt to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Here. Second. Um, so, Councillor Dubbs uh, made a motion to adjourn. Councillor Rothenberg seconded it. And I just have to do a roll call. So, um, Councillor Dubbs? Yes. Councillor Rothenberg? Yes. Councillor Perry? Yes. Councillor Clemmer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, that's all I have to do, right? That's it. You're, you're all set. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I'll see you yeah, thank all. Thank you. See you in a few. Yeah, I'll see you soon. Yeah, see you soon. See you soon. Hey, thanks everybody for coming out.